Thanks. But the most critically acclaimed Scottish band of the time were the Associates, a Dundee band fronted by the glamorous and flamboyant Billy Mackenzie. Along with guitarist Alan Rankin and Mackenzie's beloved whippets, they moved to London, landed a record deal and seemed destined for greatness. our fair share of um, living in squalor, living in flats in the dead of winter with one bed. You get the mattress tonight, I'll get the hard base when I, I'll get the fur coat so I'm warm. You know, we'd done all that and uh, so we wanted a bit of, you know, a bit of luxury, a bit, a bit of uh, payback and we just grabbed it when it came. The record company were delighted when the Associates had a top 10 hit with Party Fears 2. The two young Scots were being hailed as the next big thing. But they were a long way from home and living their version of the rock and roll dream. We stayed at the Holiday Inn and every week they would do a printout of our room extras and it just went on for page after page after page until it got laughable. And part of that was in the room next door, Bill would have his whippets and he would be ordering up six portions of smoked salmon and scrambled eggs with the shelves for the whippets to eat. Billy McKenzie seemed to sort of howl off the Scottish, you know, landscape. It just seemed to come from there. It was so raw and, and, and beautiful and glamorous and so ahead of its time. But it was still pop music. The wildest, weirdest music. It, it, it was proved that it could go on top of the pops. The band's Top of the Pops appearances were as flamboyant as their spending habits. We had this uh, sugary song, so we said, OK, well, let's get some chocolate guitars made. So sure enough, we got uh, some fairly good Fender Jaguar copies made out of three different colours of chocolate from Harrods. They cost £230 each. I just fed it to the audience. Despite their undoubted talent, the Associates only managed three appearances in the top 40. With a lack of success, the money ran out and the original band broke up in 1982. Who would have, you know, bet against them? The, the, the sheer confidence and bravado. They were just a fantastic band. Very, very un-Scottish, but we remain so incredibly proud of them. And in particular, the late, great Mackenzie, just one of the greatest vocalists of all time. The associates were typical of the first wave of homegrown Scottish bands in that success was to be short-lived. <laughs> 